joy. Oh, yes, I still have joy. After all, After all the things I've been through, I, I still have joy. joy. I still have joy. Oh, yes, I still have joy. After all, After all the things I've been through, I, I still have I still have God. I still have God. I still have joy. Oh, yes, I still have joy. Oh, I still have joy. And there are all the things I've been through. Oh, after all the things I've been through. Yes, after all the things I've been through. After all the things I've been through. I still have joy.
that brother and sister Christ, we come together from the first day of the week, we are to remember the death, the death of the resurrection. At this present time, we are going to serve you communion, and we pray that you have made a commitment to serve him all the days of your life. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 11, chapter, beginning at the 23rd verse, he writes, for I have received it of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you. The Lord did it the same night when he used the faith to pray. He did give a thanks. He read it that they eat this in my life, which is broken for you. After the same man also he took the cup, he had supper. And this cup, if you took it in my blood, as often as you drink it and remember the meat, you do to the Lord after the cup. Before you take up this bread, drink up this cup. We pray that you will remember that he is the Lord's broken by his shed blood. Let us give thanks. Father, we thank you so much for sending your son into the world. He said he died because he loved us so. And we pray that we will always remember that he is our Savior. He is just put it first. We love him the way he loved his disciples. In Christ the holy name we pray. No heavy garment, I'll just wrap my robe around 
Will I receive my mention? Row and round, I won't mention. Row and round, a fair and long wheel always about. Oh, won't you let, let me hear your throne surround? Lord, we deserve a mansion. Robe and crown, of my head bow, and body down for the work that I tried to do. But one day we rewarded with the crown so bright and new. And I'll wear a smile so bright, but there'll be no cause for the crown. When I receive a mansion, Robe and crown, and I won't mention Robe and a crown Up there, when the feel always about Why won't you let, let me will your throne surround Lord, we deserve a mansion Robe and crown, and I won't mention Good morning. We will be in Matthew, the 28th chapter, and we'll read verses 18 through 20 this morning, where the Bible reads, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And verse 20 teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Once again, we are thankful to God for this opportunity to share his word with you. And we always appreciate your dedication and your love for it. Uh, this morning, we're concluding a series that we began on the subject of focus. Uh, where we use the running theme, what consumes your mind controls your life. Uh, this speaks to the fact that the things that you and I focus on most will more times than not dictate our walk. Uh, this is the reason why Jesus warned his disciples in Matthew, the sixth chapter, where he says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, these other things that we focus on that are not as important uh, shall be added to you. Uh, in our text, uh, the words uh, that were read in your hearing are what is known as the Great Commission. Um, in the original language, these words are a command. Uh, that is why we call this the great commission and not the great consideration or the great contemplation. Uh, Jesus did not say, look, if you're in the mood and you're not busy, as a personal favor to me, could you consider going into the world and making disciples? No, that's, that's not uh, what Jesus said, nor was that his mood. Uh, these words were given to every follower of Jesus. And if uh, I am his disciple, I am commanded to go and make disciples of others. Uh, on the other hand, if I am not making disciples of others, then I'm not being the disciple God called me to be. Um, for many, if we are being honest, the Great Commission has instead become the Great Omission. Uh, you know, the Commission family is, is not... Uh, uh, called for us to wait uh, for the world to come to us. Uh, it is for us to go into all the world. Uh, 
Now, now we know that that Jesus came to do the will of his father who sent him, but he could not do the work alone. Uh, in fact, he needed help uh, of others. Uh, that's why in Matthew, the ninth chapter, uh, we read where it says, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Verse 37 says, then he said to his disciples, the harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. Family, in that same way, God has a role for every Christian in his global purpose. Uh, and when we lean on him as he commanded, uh, we will find ourselves seeing what he saw, feeling what he felt, and doing what he did. Uh, I recognize that not all are called to be sent out, uh, but I am assured uh, all are called to be a part of the discipling of this nation. Uh, this uh, we can do, I believe, if we uh, stay focused, if, if we uh, really pay attention to what truly is important. Uh, with that thought, as we close out this series, I would like to speak to you from the subject, focused on the mission. Pray with me, please. Father in heaven, we come to you this time thanking you so much for this day. Father, thanking you once again for the opportunity to share your word. As always, I ask that you remove the messenger that the message might be heard. This morning, give me the confidence, the conviction, the boldness it takes to proclaim that message. And I pray that you open the hearts of those that are listening, hoping they will receive it with gladness. Challenges by your word. This prayer we do ask in your son's name. Amen. As we come to our first point this morning, uh, we see that in order to stay focused on the mission, we must trust his authority. Verse 18 says, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. As Jesus speaks to his disciples, he tells them that he has been given all authority. Uh, the word authority here means the right to use power. Uh, earlier this week in one of our Shepherds Thursday morning Bible classes, uh, Ronnell mentioned that Jesus has the might and the right. Uh, he has the might to do all things, and he has the right to do all things. Uh, in our text, Matthew emphasizes this theme throughout his Gospels. Uh, he spoke to the fact that uh, Jesus taught with authority. Um, Matthew chapter 7 Around verse 29, he says, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. When the congregations heard him, they were astonished by his message, uh, unlike the scribes and the Pharisees. Now, you might be asking yourself the question, why is that? What made his message so special? Um, when the scribes and Pharisees spoke, they spoke from authorities, always quoting the various rabbis and experts of the law. But when Jesus spoke, he spoke having authority. You see, Jesus needed no human teacher to add authority to his word, for he spoke as the son of God. Uh, Matthew also tells us that he ruled with authority. Uh, Jesus repeatedly, family, demonstrated his authority over all things, uh, over the human body, diseases, sickness, and healing, over demons and Satan, even over natural elements such as wind and water. I'm reminded of the message in uh, Matthew, the eighth chapter, where Jesus sends his disciples out on the boat, and as they are, are, are selling, if you will, uh, uh, the winds and the waves start tossing and turning them and then they become nervous and they cry out to Jesus. And, 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 and Jesus shows forth his authority over nature. Uh, as a result of that, in 
verse 27 of that chapter, uh, we see where it says, but the men marveled saying, what manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves are the sea obey him? Um, but of all those, and, and, and all of them are amazing, one, uh, one right, uh, uh, one authority that Jesus has that I am most thankful for is that he has the authority to forgive. Listen to the words of uh, in Matthew, the ninth chapter, where the Bible says, so he got into a boat, crossed over and came to his own city. Then behold, they brought him a paralytic uh, lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, be of good cheer for your sins are forgiven you. And once uh, some of the scribes said within themselves, uh, or at once, excuse me, some of the scribes said within themselves, this man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, says, why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, then he said to the paralytic, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. And he arose and departed to his house. Uh, this statement, take up your bed and go to your house, uh, is in contrast to the question which uh, uh, was easier. Uh, uh, it was easier to say he was forgiven, but for them to know that Jesus has this authority, this right, he told the man to get up, to take up his bed, and to go home. Family, it is clear that the miracle of healing was designed to show them that he has the authority to forgive sins. And since Christ today has all authority, uh, we can obey him without fear. No matter where he leads us, family. No matter what circumstances we face, he is in control. Listen, Jesus defeated all his enemies by his death and resurrection and won for himself all authority. Which brings us to our second point. Uh, trust his appointment. This is found in verse 19 and 28 of our text, where the Bible says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. One thing I'd like to clear up before we uh, delve into this uh, text is, is the Greek verb translated go is actually not a command. Um, uh, it's a present participle. Uh, it means going. Uh, the only command found me in the entire Great Commission, in fact, is make disciples or teach all nations. Uh, literally, what Jesus is uh, saying is while you are going, the command is make disciples of all nations. Uh, no matter where you are, uh, family, we should be witnesses for Jesus. Um, listen, not all will be saved, but all deserve a chance to hear the gospel. Um, the psalmist in Psalms, the 96th division, it says, declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all peoples. Um, also, our commission is not simply to win souls. Um, I know we, 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 we encourage that and we push that and, and, and don't get me wrong, it has its importance, but that's not all there is to it. It's to make disciples. Someone might be scratching their head asking, isn't that the same thing? Well, actually it's not. Um, the term disciple was the most popular name for the early believers, uh, being a disciple meant more than being a convert or a church member. Um, apprentice might be uh, an equivalent term. 
Uh, you see, a disciple attached himself to a teacher, identified with him, learned from him, and even lived with him. Uh, he learned not simply by listening, but also by doing. A disciple then uh, is one who believes in Jesus and expresses this faith by being baptized and remains in the fellowship of the believers that they might be taught the truths of this faith, uh, who then are able to go out and win others and teach them. Uh, family, this is the pattern of the New Testament church. Uh, listen to the words of the apostle Paul to his young son, Timothy, where he says, you therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have learned from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Jesus called 12 disciples and taught them so that they might be able to teach others. It's verse 20 that says, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Uh, to this point, Jesus alone has been the teacher. Now they take over his role of teaching. Uh, they are to teach not just the abstract ideas, but observe all that he has commanded them. Uh, family, our message is not a message about our church. Uh, it's not a message about the preacher. It's not a message about the style of worship. Um, uh, all of these may have some importance to it, but none of them can save lost souls. Our message is a simple message. It is a message of hope to the hurting, of life to the dead, of peace to the tormented. Our message is called the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Uh, 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 what Paul called the power of God into salvation. Uh, it is a message that every person in the world needs to hear. It was uh, James that once says, therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your soul. Family, these disciples were to reproduce themselves by going, baptizing, and teaching. But making disciples or being a disciple is not complete unless it leads us to a life of observing uh, Jesus' commands. Uh, you and I need to be like uh, King David, who says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of the sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But he says his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Which brings us to our final point this morning. Uh, we can remain focused on the mission if we trust his aid. This is found in verse 20b of our text where Jesus says, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Um, Jesus sent his disciples with a mission to fulfill his purpose, but he did not send them alone. Uh, Matthew uh, 18, verse 20, the Bible says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Family, I hope you appreciate whether we are gathered together or scattered abroad, God will always be with us. Have you ever had an event uh, or something special that you were doing and you wanted um, someone close to you uh, to be there, but they could not? And their statement to you, which is a good statement, uh, is, uh, I cannot be there, but I'll be there in spirit, which basically means they're, they're, they'll be thinking about you. Um, Jesus says something here to them that may have had them thinking uh, the same thing. He says, and lo, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. And they were probably thinking, how is that possible? You might, 
uh, you know, we 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 don't want you. We don't want your your, your thoughts. We want you. Um, which is really why uh, 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 John uh, makes so much sense his writings when Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he and he tells them, I believe it's in chapter uh, sixteen that um, uh, he has to go because if he does not go, uh, uh, they will not be blessed. Uh, if he does not go, they will not truly benefit. Uh, the reason why Jesus had to leave family is is so that uh, his spirit could come and dwell with us. Uh, if Jesus would have remained in the flesh, he would not have been able to fulfill his promise. It is when the spirit came that Jesus could be with his people no matter where they were. Uh, it is the Spirit of God family that uh, uh, blesses us, that, that, that allows us to have the confidence to make it through this journey uh, because we know we're not alone. We recognize that he, in fact, will be there with us. It was the Apostle Paul that once says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. It is his presence, family, uh, that, that, that uh, provides so much for us. Uh, it provides for us in this verse, power. Uh, Jesus says, and lo, I am with you. Uh, literally, uh, I am here means it is is I, myself, I, God, and man, who am with you. Uh, I'm reminded of uh, when Moses was sent to Pharaoh uh, to um, uh, ask them to let his people go. Uh, Moses asked the question, well, who should I say sent me? Moses tells us in Exodus chapter 3, God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Beloved, as long as I am sends us, we can be confident in our word and our walk. It was the apostle Paul to the church of Colossae that says, and whatever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Secondly, his presence uh, brings with it privilege. Uh, Jesus says, lo, I am with you. Um, Paul understood this principle well. Uh, he shared with the church at uh, Corinth, for we are God's fellow workers. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, since Jesus promised to be with us, we not only work for him, but we also work with him. You know, that makes our work so much easier, knowing that we have him at our side. Uh, and third, uh, it brings protection. He says, lo, I am with you always. Uh, the English verb always um, is found only here in the New Testament. Uh, the word literally means the whole of every day. You know, family, each day uh, we live uh, all day long, if you will. <laughs> God is with us uh, because uh, we are never out of his supervision or his sight. We once again can have confidence. Uh, listen to the words of uh, in Isaiah chapter 41, where the Bible says, for I, the Lord, your God, will hold your right hand, uh, saying to you, fear not, I will help you. And finally, his presence brings purpose. He goes on to say, even to the end of the age. The end of the age indicates the Savior has a plan. Um, as we follow his lead and obey his word, we will fulfill his purpose in this world. I, I know it might seem difficult at uh, 
times are and especially in this moment. But all things will be fulfilled. We just have to stay focused. It was the Apostle Peter that says, In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. You know, someone has said uh, Christianity is a missionary faith. Um, you know, the very nature of God demands this, for God is love, and he's not willing that any should perish. This is why Jesus died for the whole world. Family, if we are the children of God and share his nature, then we will want to tell the good news to the lost. To do so, we must stay focused on the mission. Pray with me, please. Father in heaven, once again, we thank you for this day and for your blessings. Father, we realize that we live in a sin sick world where uh, uh, many uh, reject your will and your way. But there are still some, Father, who in fact are looking for hope. And you have sent us to be a messenger uh, of uh, hope to those who, in fact, need it. But even more, Father, we must recognize that this word which you have given us, Father, has the power to even, has the power, rather, to even change the lives of those who at this moment reject you. We cannot uh, disregard those, Father, who might seem as though they don't care. For you have sent us to share this gospel with the whole world, with all of those, Father, uh, who we come in contact with. Father, we have not always done our best, and we pray that you will continue to be patient with us. And Father, we also ask that you will give us the, the strength, the courage uh, that we need to continue, Father, to shine a light on a dark world. Father, Continue to bless all of those that are in the sound of my voice this day, asking that you bless us and that you keep us in your care, that you will allow us, Father, to remain patient and remain focused, Father, as we deal with this until we can come back, Father, and, and, and be energized by one another. Father, we thank you for all you have done and all you will continue to do in our lives. This prayer we do ask in your son's name. Amen. Once again, we are thankful to God for this opportunity to share his word with you. And we hope and pray that, that God's word has touched you in a mighty way. Um, we invite those of you who do not know of uh, Jesus and the pardoning of your sins to, to um, ask questions, to, to call on us, that we might share more perfectly his sound truths. Um, before I leave... Um, I just want to wish a happy birthday to my good buddy, Arthur Jackson. God bless, man. God bless everyone. Thank you for being a part of today's broadcast of the Infinite Word. I pray that you've been encouraged by today's message. The Infinite Word broadcast is sponsored by the Compton Avenue Church of Christ family, located at 9415 Compton Avenue in the city of Los Angeles, California under the leadership and guidance of pastor and evangelist, Brother Anthony Stokes. We invite you to subscribe to the Infinite Word broadcast channel and future broadcasts by clicking on the subscribe button on the bottom of your screen. We would love to hear from you. Let us know your prayer request or questions you may have pertaining to your relationship with God. Or maybe you need counseling or would like to participate in an online Bible class please contact us at the phone number or email address that appears on your screen. Or visit our website and follow the links and let us know your requests. Friends, we are all God's prized possessions. So I urge you today not to receive God's grace in vain. For his word says, in the time of my favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. Friends, now is the time of God's favor and today is the day of salvation. For all who will hear, God's salvation is a free gift to us, but we must accept it. We can never make up for our sins by and through self-improvement or good works. Only by trusting in Jesus Christ as God's offering of forgiveness can we be saved from the penalty of sin. 
His perfect gift of love is awaiting your response to His call today to be baptized into His kingdom of everlasting love. Remember, no one or thing can separate you from the love of God. Until next week, may God bless you and your loved ones.